This time on the show, maintaining persistence and privacy on IRC with your very own bouncer. Darren explains. Then setting up simple two-factor authentication in Windows. Take that, Komoot! Plus, why Vim is better than Vi. Or was that Emacs? Hm. All that and much more this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Nian Cat. And Nian Cat, would you yeah, mind? I know that you like standing on Pelican cases because you want to be my height, but oh. that one's actually my laptop. Oh, it is? No, I'm serious. That oh. one is. See, yeah. I just saw a box and I was like, oh, this is perfect because I have heels. It's not well, as big. Well, you know how I feel about these things. They're just hardcore. And I got, I lucked out. Our, uh, and they're little... not a sponsor or anything. You're no, just, I just love you're these just things. Obsessed I mean, with I, them. No, I just, I just like doing that. It's fun. Oh, the lawyer's under Please. us. Right. Well, they're doing Quiet. construction next door. They'll just think it was them. <laughs> just blame it on them. Yeah. I'm just going to blame it on the construction crew next door. That's but. so bad. <laughs> but we lucked out with these AT, uh, Acer 1830Ts Ooh, really nice. because it was made for an iPad. That's this. It's the perfect fit. Yeah. Nice. I'm stoked. You know how that is when you get And it all... still works even though I'm fat? Um, LS. Yeah, it works. Yeah. All right, cool. Very yep. nice. So uh, how's your week been, buddy? My week has been awesome. Oh, my uh, name's Shannon we, Morse, by oh. the way, not really Neon Cat. I just like Neon Cats. Okay. You're going to South by Southwest. I'm Neon Catting there. In fact, I'm Neon Catting now. <laughs> in the future. Paul hates it when we do that. Um, yeah, the South by Southwest panel, all I can say, I guess, is to keep uh, keep up to date with the hack5.org slash vlog. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm vlogging again. And oh, nice. I will have updates from South by Southwest there. Cool. Yes. I'm excited to see those. I, I don't think I can record my talk, but we'll see. I don't know. You know, it's one of those things. You know what this was? Yes. It's Conboot. Oh, that's your favorite. One. Okay, so for those not initiated, Conboot is freaking sick because it bypasses Windows security like that. And it'll even do it for the 2.6 kernel. That's Conboot 1.1. Yeah. It'll do 32-bit and 64. You Windows just... 7, yep. Yeah, so how does it work? So um, it takes the Windows kernel and it like changes it or something. I don't remember. It brings its own kernel. It's a BYOK. But um, yeah, it messes with the Windows kernel and basically you get to the login screen and you can type in gibberish and it lets you log in as the root ad admin. So it's kind of fun to use. And I actually have a tool that I'm going to be using this segment uh, this week that's going to let you um, kind of avoid the Kombut issues that a lot of people have. So yeah, another you know way to keep yourself safe and secure. I'm going to start doing this, absolutely. In fact, I want to find out how can I do this for Linux now and put my like Ooh, Etsy password shadow idea. file or whatever. Because, um, you know, the, the idea of these these boot keys, I love these boot keys. When you did your con boot segment, you just boot off of this and you're in yeah. and it's yeah, done, that's it's game all over. You do. And it doesn't affect this running system because nope. if like you were to come back to it later after I've hacked your box, you wouldn't know because your password hasn't changed or anything like that. Yeah. I used to use the, uh, I forget what it's called, the NT offline brute force password reset blah blah blah. Anyway, it would just allow you to reset the password. But then yeah. you know, it, the kind of the gigs up. You know, your password's been reset. Mm -hmm. And um, and this one doesn't even reset your password or anything. You just log in with some gibberish, do whatever you want to do, log out and walk away. The person comes back, the real user. They log in with their normal password, and nothing's changed, or so, at least so they think. So people ask me like, how do you protect against this? And uh, my thing was, I use. Uh, full disk encryption with TrueCrypt. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you've done a segment on that as yeah. well. It's True fantastic stuff. Awesome. But this would be a nice additional layer to that security. Yeah, it gives you that extra like two-factor authentication that a lot of people are really, really, you know, gung-ho about right yeah. now. Yeah, so. because you know, it's always like a back and forth. And this it's like, one's easy, but it's just for Windows. Well, so anyway. like my password in Windows historically has been the apostrophe key right. because it's right next to enter. And the way that I feel <laughs> so about true. it is, why bother having a Windows password when something like Conboot exists? Like, come on, that shouldn't be the thing preventing somebody that would be stealing your laptop from getting at your data. You should mm -hmm. start thinking in the mindset like, don't trust Microsoft to protect your crap, just encrypt your stuff. And so I'd do full disk encryption, I'd use TrueCrypt volumes with hidden partitions and stuff like that. But you know, I was always like a back and forth because yeah. we did the, um, yeah. was it the, the stuff where you can like freeze the memory with like a oh, can right. of air yeah, upside down? Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> 
So, you know, like pull the RAM and then get the encryption keys. And then oh, what was the name of the attack with, um, oh, with the cleaning lady? You know that one? Oh, the maid, the uh, yes. French maid. The French maid attack yeah. to bypass the uh, login for, um, for true crypt full disk mm -hmm. encryption. So it's just like one of these back and forth things. But I love this uh, solution because really in order for me to like steal your laptop and get in, I have to steal your laptop and your second factor of yeah. authentication. And if you like, you know, hide that as like a suppository or something, it's going to be really difficult for yes, somebody to will. get at. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, I'll get more into that in my segment, but we have a gift from a fan. Yes, we do. We have multiple. I'm actually wearing a gift from a fan. Get this. I That's can't. That's the domain.com logo. I, you know, I kind of, I feel like a domain superhero with this on. <laughs> I'm like, awesome. I'm ready to register. You're like the Flash. <laughs> I actually just registered an awesome domain over there. Um, it was uh, chilloutaffects.org instead of chillingeffects.org. Oh, nice. You can head over there, it's, it's fun. <laughs> we did it on TNT, but uh, but yeah, so we just finally got these in the mail and I got a letter and it's like, oh, Darren and Shannon, no love for you, Paul. And Paul. <laughs> but it says, hey, Darren and Hi. Shannon, and Paul, we wanted to, <laughs> we wanted to send you our new domain.com t-shirts as our thanks for all of your amazing support. We also threw in some extras for Paul. Oh, there's, there's a shout out. And <laughs> anyone else, so we should give those away. Yeah, ways. we can do some trivia winners. Yeah, that'd be great. Hack5 has really been a huge part of our success from on-air mentions to Darren's tweets. We think you guys are awesome. Here's this. It says, happy holidays to you and the entire Hack5 family, Domain.com. Thank you, Domain.com. We love you, too. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. It's March. It's March. <laughs> So we use. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure what happened to that package, but apparently it, hate, it finally arrived. I hate to call out. I, I don't want to be that guy that's all like, I had horrible service, so I'm going to tweet about the dang. Because I actually normally love Earth Class Mail, EarthClassMail.com. It's so cool because you can have like 548 Market Street, you know, yeah. and, and all these addresses, and it's but how we're What happened doing. to that package? I don't get it. I don't Three know, months. Man. Yeah. So we're glad that we finally got it, and I feel like a domain new superhero yeah. now. Super cute. Yes. I have mine at home. Yes. It's awesome. Any and more uh, fan goodies? Uh, yeah, actually, this one is, um, I don't know what it is, but I hear that it's very cool. All I'll right, well, you take the letter, and, and you can I'll take, take that. Mm. So, found this free BSD power pack. What caught my eye and made me laugh was this quote from the back of the box. Walnut Creek CD-ROM, the publisher of this book, relies exclusively on free BSD to power its website and FTP site, ftp.cdrom.com. The busiest site in the world, according to independent auditors, it uses, it uses free BSD to manage 5,000 users, 4 gigs, of RAM, 4 gigs of RAM, and over 500 gigs of hard drive space. 4 gigs and 500 gigs hard drive. That's the specs on a mid-range laptop today. It's amazing how fast yeah. technology evolved over 12 years. Keep up the great work. Hack 5 and Hack Tip are informative and entertaining. Thank you from Tom. Thank you, Tom. It says right here, it's, that FreeBSD is what makes Yahoo scream. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can take that several different ways now. I'm actually, you know, no, my heart goes out to all of the uh, Yahoo layoff people because uh, that yeah, just that really sucks. sucks. Um, but yeah, dude, I mean, I'm, Isn't don't get me cool? wrong. I, I love free the FreeBSD. It's, it's fun to call it Freebsd, too. I'm just going to say Freebsd. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's going to go in the collection. Thank you so much. I love that. And Walnut Creek, you know where that is? Yeah, isn't, it's isn't like... Isn't that like right over there? Yeah, it's yeah. like over there. It feels so weird to be in the Bay Area now because I gotta... To be honest, do you remember like being back on the East Coast and like, you know, growing up in tech and stuff and you'd sign up for some Web 2.0 stuff and it would always default you to San Francisco and you're like, oh, I'm yeah. not in San Francisco. I, I think really we hated wish on, I was there. Paul, remember we like hated on this city, this Bay Area for like years just because it was like, I don't know if it was like envy or just like tired of hearing about the stupid Bay. Uh, yeah, it was, it was jealous envy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> if you can't beat them, join them, I guess. Yeah, right? I guess so. Man, we lose so much street cred for that. We should go back to Williamsburg Damn. and churn butter. <laughs> right. All right. Fantastic episode this week because we've got fun how-to stuff. You're protecting PCs. I am yes. relaying internet relay chat. So that's like a double relay. What does it mean? What does it mean? Yeah, what's going on with that, man? Do you uh, happen to catch any of the news about Lulsec? Uh, yeah, the guy got captured from his IRC thingamajigger. Yeah, thing. yeah, so um, it was, uh, I believe the guy's handle is, is Zabu or Sabu? Oh, Sabu. Sabu. And yeah. um, Sabu. 
you know, depending on the article that you read, you get a completely different picture. Like the Fox That's News so article is like, these evil hackers and they busted them and yeah, go Republicans, you know? And, uh, and, and then there's also, you know, if you head over to the register.co.uk, you get like a much different opinion. Anyway, regardless, um, uh, the long and short of it is this, this guy's Sabu or Zabu yeah. was um, busted and became an FBI informant and, you know, helped bring down some other people the other day from Anonymous and Lulzac and stuff like that. How did and he get caught? You guys now? know how we feel about that whole issue. It's just like, guys, be mischievous, have fun, but don't do stupid stuff and don't be malicious. Yeah, be but, nice with your hacking. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and there's nothing cool about LOIC. But uh, that said, it was really interesting that, you know, like, like people are like, oh my God, the FBI got him because he didn't route his IRC traffic through Tor. One time. The, the onion router. The one time that he f didn't do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not claiming to be like an IRC master, but I have been on it since like the 90s with MIRC and IRC oh, yeah. down that, you know. See, I've just been using it since like, you know, XIRC or whatever it's oh, called. Oh yeah, so. X-chat, yeah. X -chat, Exclamation yeah. shit point F serve, you what, what? Yeah, yeah. it's way better than Kazaa. I'm just saying, <laughs> um, duh, the FBI is on there. It's just like standard operating procedure. So for like the other articles, they're like, oh my God, the FBI has infiltrated the internet relay chat network. It's like, Yay! yes, and all dot binaries is for where? You know, they've been watching it for, you know, yeah. years, of course. But, um, but so I figured this is actually an apt time because I was, I actually had later in the doc in the season to, to talk about this, but I was like, you know what? It'd be fun to talk about IRC bouncers now. Oh. So I figured I'd do a nice little segment on it, especially since Domain.com hooked me up with a cool t-shirt and I'm using their service to do the thing. It's fun. Nice, okay, cool. Well, yes. you get on that. All right. I'm very interested in Your seeing Your NANCAP powers should activate. Yeah. Hack 5's 11th season is here. And we are so happy to let you know that Domain.com has been sponsoring us for three years. They're our favorite domain registrar and the truth is we couldn't be happier. Hack5.org is actually hosted there. And for new domain names, to add new domain names to your portfolio, to manage all your company's domains, do a little hacking, Domain.com. I just told you about how awesome their virtual private servers are. And let me tell you, if you need to host your website, you can get up and running with like WordPress and Joomla. They've got like installs in seconds with tons of other cool, super easy to use open source software. And let me tell you, the women at Domain.com. Yeah, they're, hand, they're, they're fans of Hack5, and, and I'm not kidding. If you, in fact, tweet at Domain.com, their Twitter, you might actually find yourself hooked up with a cool new Domain.com t-shirt. I'm just saying, try it out. And don't forget, when you're at Domain.com, buying your new domains, like I just did with chilloutaffects.org, you can you know, also transfer them if you're over somewhere else. Use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout. It'll save you an extra 15%. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. So a bouncer, an internet relay chat network bouncer, or a BNC, it's a server program that maintains persistence uh, and a connection to IRC server. It's kind of like a proxy. Now, the BNC is actually used to bounce traffic through, and it's great because it protects the user's privacy and also adds a cool functionality and, you know, like I said, the persistence. Now, my bouncer of choice is called ZNC. It's been in active development since 2004, and this bouncer is so cool. It's written in C++, it's licensed on the, to the GNU GPL, so it's free, and you know how we feel about free. Um, and some other cool things that it does, in addition to simply relaying IRC sessions, is that it supports SSL uh, security, it does IP version 6 support, it supports multiple users, and it can be, it has all these extensions through Perl, Python, and TCL modules. And it's also get this really, really easy to set up. So in this demo, I'm going to be going ahead and using my very own virtual private server from domain.com so that you know, when I shut down my laptop, or I'm at the office, or I'm at home, or wherever I may be, I can just log into my VPS over at domain.com, and it's already connected to my IRC, yeah, already in progress, and that way I don't have to log out and back into the chat room all the time. I can lurk and idle infinitely. How cool is that? All right, so let's go ahead and begin with a little SSH action, and I'm gonna head over to the root account at my VPS over at domain.com. They actually host hack5.org and the forms and everything else. 
and there we go. And first thing I need to do before anything else is I need to add a user because the last thing I want to do is be running this as root. Don't do that. So there's various ways. I actually like to use add user now. And I'm going to call it Bob because, you know, that'd be awesome. Oh, I already did this in a previous session. So we'll add user Bob Boberson because, you know, why not? And so if I cat slash Etsy slash pass WD, you'll see here that I have, in fact, a Bob Boberson. Oh, there was my Bob user account from the previous demo. And I can go ahead and uh, create a password for him. So pass WD Bob Boberson, and then give him a password like Lame password, and there we go. And so now all I have to do is SU to switch user to Bob, Bob Erson, and here we go. And if I type CD and hit enter, uh, my directory changes PWD to print it, and I can see I'm in my slash home slash Bob Boberson uh, directory, and that's where I want to be. So now get this. Now to install it, this could be very simple or not, depending on how you want to go. There are packages in like the Debian and Ubuntu repositories, but they're mostly out of date. And honestly, you were just so much better off compiling from source. And believe me, it is super easy. Uh, so all we need to do to get started with that is download the file, unzip it, configure it, make it, install it, and we're good to go. So wget to just download it from the web. And ZNC can be found at ZNC.in. And if I go to the releases folder and ZNC TAC 0.204, latest version as of recording, .tar.gz, uh, ANC, it's ZNC.0.204.tar.gz. Yeah, that should be. And we'll unzip that or uncompress it or whatever you want to call Z and C and then CD over to it. And there we go. We look around and we can see here we have the, uh, the files and we just need to go ahead and do dot slash configure. And this is going to go ahead and check everything. And once that's done, we can go ahead and make, and I see right here that I do not have Perl or Python or TCL. Uh, those would be really handy. I wanted to run a lot of the cool modules that it comes with. But the nice thing about the modules is you can load them after the fact. So just to make things easy, I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> make. And it goes ahead and starts uh, compiling all of those fun little C objects. And it's going to be good and fun stuff. And we're done making, so now we can make install. And there we go. Now it's all set. So if I ls here, whoops, ls, and I can see I have my ZNC. And if I do a dot slash ZNC and then tac tac make conf, I can actually go through this cool wizard to make my configuration files so I don't have to do it by hand, which is kind of nice. And obviously, you would probably want to make install at a certain point. Um, but just for now, we're going to run it from right.